Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Ask Amity Show. Today, we want to talk to you about conservatorships. What is the difference between a general conservatorship and a limited conservatorship? With general conservatorships, this is usually set up for adults who cannot take care of themselves or uh, their own finances. So these adults typically may have uh, gone into a car accident or have some sort of medical condition that causes them to be unable to uh, take care of themselves. Oftentimes, these are elderly people, but can also be younger adults because, you know, you never know what's going to happen. But generally, for general conservatorships, that's the target kind of individual that we uh, deal with. For uh, limited conservatorship, this is set up for adults with developmental disabilities, such as individuals with autism, epilepsy, cerebral palsy, etc. That began before the individual's 18th birthday, who cannot fully care for themselves or their finances. Adults in limited conservatorships do not require the high level of care or help that conservatees in general conservatorships require. Parents of someone who requires this type of conservatorship will usually appoint a conservator in their will to help care for the individual. So who typically can file for a conservatorship? Uh, There are a number of people who can file for a conservatorship, uh, the spouse or the domestic partner of the proposed conservatee, a relative of the proposed conservatee, any interested state or local entity or agency, any other interested person or friend of the proposed conservatee, and the proposed conservatee himself or herself. When it comes to appointing a conservator, the court uh, will appoint an individual who will look out for the conservatee's best interests. If the proposed conservatee has not or cannot choose anyone, there generally is a list of preferences the court will abide by. The order of preference generally is first, the spouse or the domestic partner. Second is the adult child. Third would be a parent. Fourth would be a sibling. Fifth would be any person that the law says is okay. And then number six would be a public guardian. So what are the responsibilities for each type of conservatorship? In a general conservatorship of the person, conservators have uh, several key responsibilities. So number one, they decide where the individual will live. Number two, they figure out where and when the individual will receive medical treatment. And lastly, they provide for the individual's daily needs, including food, hygiene, enrichment, socialization, and education. Depending on the needs of the individual, a limited conservatorship may include some or all of the following responsibilities, selecting a residence, assessing and maintaining confidential document and papers, allowing or not allowing marriage, entering into contracts, educational decisions, management of social relationships, and medical consent. So there are a lot of details with conservatorships. Um, If you want to learn more about the differences or what would apply in your situation, don't hesitate to contact our team. We'd be happy to discuss with you the differences between a limited and a general conservatorship and see what would be your best choice. Um, Again, thank you for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thank you again and we'll see you soon.